All right, now I'm back, yeah? Sweet. Yeah, and then the, and see, if you tried to do that in Google Hangouts, then people couldn't go to the link you gave. And the playlist has been half-assed, but I'm looking forward to spending more actual time with it. Like, you could put up all kinds of things, like, um, and I don't think anybody would just watch that per se, but, you know, you might, and I'm often looking for I'm working, and I just want a long video the drone on, and I'll pick up certain parts of it, and I listen to documentaries and stuff. I would listen to people's channels, basically. In this case, though, I don't want it to just be like what Piero wants to put in the loop. I'd like it to be a mix of what's going on in the greater conversation of, you know, two degrees of separation, what we're talking about in a, in a particular area here. And, uh, you know, I've had people are suggesting some Gary videos I could put in the rotation, which I'm planning to do. And I'll probably put some science videos and... Um, and frankly, I like have something to do with those old videos, especially since a lot of them I put in that list, like we're still arguing about that shit. So they're and it's still my same position. So it feels good to just take a five-year-old video and go, okay, here's what I think about your latest point on antinatalism. Not to, not to be mean to anybody about their antinatalism, that's fine, but something I've been arguing about for eight years, so. So viewers, now I, what I don't understand is how can there be viewers? It says there's five viewers, but there's three people showing in the chat. So I thought all viewers showed up in the chat, but maybe if you're not registered at FireTalk, then it doesn't work like that. So if somebody's in here, Besides Lana K and Affinity, there's supposedly two people in here that are not in the chat, or at least I don't see them in the viewers, li I mean, in the uh, list, the, the guest viewers one, what's that mean? Number of guest viewers. So philosophy and progress. Oh, that went to the chat. Oh, wants to be a guest. Okay, sure. Oh, I see. One guest because I'm the one guest viewer. Now, Lana Kay, you said you didn't have a mic set up, right? But it said to me that you asked to be a guest, so I clicked on it. Oh, yeah, and it says invite to guest. So I wonder what you clicked on that makes that happen. I just read a thing that um, said there'd be a way to raise your hand to become a guest, but they didn't have that yet. Mm-hmm. I have a... A gift, you can't send a gift to yourself, and I have a smiley. I, I probably just don't have the one that asked to be a guest because I'm already on dock. That would be the most likely thing. I've got two icons, a present and a smiley face. Let's see, what's this? I guess. Now, here's an interesting thing. There's no way to turn off the video. Not that you need to do that, but often in these five-hour things, it's like, oh, don't turn the video on. It saves bandwidth. The video is pretty good. Quality, it seems like. Well, you said it blacked out. I mean, it looks good, the feedback here, I guess. Hmm. Yep, no way to control any of that. The settings there. What's this? Share link. Mm. 
Well, I would like to get somebody with mic'd up just to test out the video part. Normally, when we're waiting for people to show up, too, I just, you know, I, I mean, I, I do, I unload my week's worth of, uh, you know, video ideas and stuff and, and start off. And But this time, it was like all I was really thinking about is that I was going to use this platform. So it's like, I do have those things, but I'm more curious. I'm looking around here trying to, uh, oh, I see. Right. Well, for those who can't read the chat, I guess, because maybe some of those people aren't in, I don't know who the viewers are that aren't able to read the chat, but a lot of K was just saying, well, you can't mic up something in, in Linux. What kind of Linux do you use? All right, I was thinking of using Mint, but I stuck with uh, Ubuntu. So far, I did switch out from uh, using Unity to I'm using i3 Window Manager because you know yeah I'm, I I haven't given up on Unity. I think it's getting better and it could be good, but there's a bit of Windows 8 to it. i3 is a tiling window manager, so there's no wasted space. It's kind of interesting. Um, and then you can tab and they can overlap or be in a grid. And because of the way it works, you can kind of make, you can basically split the screen in half and then you can split that half in half. And by splitting in half and half, everything always fits together, but you can, you know, put all your windows around. You can have in the, the, I usually don't use workspaces. It's much easier to use workspaces. It's really smart about two monitors, way better than unity on, on the two monitors issue I can move a workspace to another monitor because of what workspaces are and um, I think uh, it's a art an arch thing I think it's um, some uh, i3 is uh, like an arch related um, project I've seen other lightweight window managers but <laughs> I, I really like the tiled thing and I, I've done that in some of my own software like this this tiling idea is is uh, useful and I think maybe the future I think maybe if you see how people build um, web interfaces it's pretty much tiled if you give the user control of those tiles and suddenly they can configure everything and you can still write things so that they display nicely with the, with the whole tile thing but um, so that's that's interesting. So you, you why do you use Linux? How'd you come to use Linux? You a programmer? Uh, away from keyboard maybe. Hmm. It's probably the fault of the education. My belief is anybody that wants to program that has an interest in it can be good at it. The problem is a lot of people don't know what computers really, how to think about computers very well. And it's like the way they teach math, <laughs> they teach it in the wrong way. And you're like, I don't get this, but it's not computers you don't get. It's the way that they think about computers maybe, but. I'm not talking about you, but I mean, you know, people that don't get math or they don't think they're getting the logic or whatever. Geometry seems confusing often. It's really just the way they teach it that's confusing. Yeah. Because I learned, I don't have a programming degree. I have a philosophy degree, right? I don't know if you know that. Lana Kay is saying uh, I'm in my first year four and a crammed learning style so yeah so the thing with me is um uh, you know i definitely have my own philosophy about how to learn stuff in the computer and it overlaps a little bit and plus i've learned some really important things in my career from people that learned the things they learned from 
academia, you know, things I would have missed, like complexity theory, super interesting and important. But basically, you learn what the computer can't do, you know, how limited it is, like the fact that logic has just six things in it or whatever, you know, it's got if, and, or, not, variables, and loops, or whatever, it's very few things. And then, you knowing what that it's limited, you pretend that you're trying to get something done and you have those limits and that's how you write the program i mean if you could figure out how to get the thing done with those limits then you'll have a list of instructions that you can give the computer to do it and um that's not really how anybody thinks about it the other weird thing is i worked with people from all different kinds of colleges and even today all of the colleges are teaching very different like contradictory philosophies about computing they're not all on the same page and between that's just even between computer science and computer science or whatever if then you go to electrical engineering schools teaching programming and you go to the master of business information or whatever they call that one now all different every single one so teaching yourself is well you know what um bioscience bioinformatics the combining the computer science with um, biology is well it's something all biologists are doing but i mean if there's a great um it's exploding it's exploding tons of jobs like right out of college you could find jobs of course in science uh, but i mean um that's a whole thing but uh, in, in industry there's a lot of people doing because well, for one thing there's a new information called icd-10 that has a lot more information so like in the old days the computer computerization of medical data the doctor might say oh he broke an arm well in icd-10 it'd be broke his left arm you know in a recreational accident and blah 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 you know there's all these little uh, sub codes and um, it, there's going to be a glut of information. And it's interesting because this is the kind of information where you do some funny little googly, you know, self-driving car, but no, it's, you know, you learn something in, from the data, you're going to save lives. So it's a pretty, pretty fun career that's also, you know, going to be paying decent for people that are interested in both of those things. There's a job here that uh, they got back to me after I just accepted a job um, at Jackson Laboratory. You ever heard of them since you've done biology? Evidently, they're famous, but I'm not. I don't know much about the biology science world. They they create the genetic mice that I guess all kinds of people use, but especially in cancer uh, research, genetic mice that. So I didn't really want to work for them because I kind of feel like we should stop using mice and we should, um, you know, just like create tissues that we test on. But I'm not totally against the idea that, well, if you're going to save people from cancer, then use mice. But it also seems like we've cured Alzheimer's in mice, but not human. It's like it's just getting a little ridiculous. Anyway, Jackson Labs goes back into the 50s or something or maybe even the 20s. I forget when they started, but... They manufacture these particular breeds of mice and they do a lot of research themselves and um, it would have been bioinformatic, even though I haven't worked in biology, just the computer side of the number crumb. But I, I didn't want to really, um, it's just on the island I'm currently living on. I really have ethical things about working for them. They got in trouble, for example, for when they're doing brain studies with these mice they clip the brains off with clippers they clip the head off and they it's not anesthetic or anything because they want to do a biopsy on the brain as it is not with some drug having killed euthanized the mice and they got caught for not rubbing the the my, mouse's neck with ice which is like well that's not much to do and then they didn't even do that it's like i can't work there but, but i am excited feelings because i know that it's kind of the sausage factory of there is stuff in medicine that we just have to face facts but i do think now we could do a lot more experiments on humans and then um you know stem cells growing organs in petri dishes that we then you know we create cancered livers and then see if we can cure that liver and then try that drug on a human kind of thing 
the idea. But um, yeah, that's the problem with biology. And then I was working for a um, an agriculture business startup, and they ended up getting bought out by an investment group where most of the money came from Monsanto. Yeah, that would be interesting in the Alzheimer's thing. Yeah, I watched that Alzheimer's closely because my grandma had it. And seriously, they kept having studies that looked promising. And it was really things that look promising in mice that don't work in humans. But yeah. No, I think stem cells is a huge thing in the ending of animal cruelty. Because especially things like um, uh, consumer things like makeup has always been a big deal. Well... I mean, first of all, you should be using things that are inert enough that you can test it on humans and all they'll get is a rash. But let's say, okay, that's not always possible. That's something where, yeah, just give me some, give them some skin and you put it on there. You learn how the artificial, the grown skin reacts. It won't be exactly the same as real skin, but you'll get a mathematical relationship and then boom, you know, you can test your heart's desire, any weird shit. The other thing is we're just got to be a grown up society and human beings with sicknesses are way more willing to be experimented on um, given good brain, given good um, pain medications and things, you know, I mean, so there's a lot of terminal patients that I think um, would be more than willing to be in various studies and that might seem scary, but I think people should just grow up and. Yeah, so I guess if you don't sign up for, I'm just guessing that if you don't sign up for Fire Talk and you come view, then you're not in the chat. So I don't see you, so I can't bring you on doc. So whoever is there, and it doesn't show, it just shows the number. So, you know, I guess three people that are watching um, via the link but not logged into fire talk if you just sign up at fire talk real quick then i'll be able to bring you on doc so i mean i'm i'm a, the kind of person that i like experiments if it's just another failure that's fine and it doesn't mean i won't try again but really for success mode we have to get somebody up here that's docked up uh dockable you know that has audio at least not necessarily video but audio and to try that out so anybody in the viewers list, uh, four people that aren't in the live chat, go sign up to Fire Talk real quick. It's free and they are good. It's a good enough company. They're not going to fuck you over and their software works good. So and you don't need to download anything. And and, and then that, I think, is what I assume Launakea and Infinity that you signed up to Fire Talk and that's why you're showing up. Yeah. Alana K confirms that signing up is easy. You can connect to G+. That's right. I didn't even do that. I did sign up because I wanted to have the channel and I wanted to be able to make sure it was separate or whatever. But they have a G+, and I think Facebook and Twitter may be signups too. So, All right. Well, I'm going to take a quick, um, a quick break. And I've been wondering if I take a quick break, if I should end the broadcast or um, if I should... Uh, you know, which would just leave this going, but with the with the playlist or keep it open. And I decided at least for right now, I'm going to keep it open because then it's obviously an empty room. Now, if somebody shows up when I'm not here, then uh, say hello. And uh, I'm looking for, I don't understand. Number of guest viewers is now three. It keeps changing. One, two, three. It's not us. And yet it's not the same as the number of viewers, which it says is seven. So uh, we're growing. I mean, this is, channel is doubling at this speed by next week we'll have a million viewers walter wz showed up in the actual room i mean in the actual live chat so i think we've confirmed that the people that show up in the chat are um have actually signed up for firetalk.com We're just waiting here to, because I soon because I'm so happy to get anybody on dock. Somebody new shows up, boom! I'm going to assume they are docked up. Walter WZ, 
is being loaded. I don't know if it shows you guys that. Oh, it says he failed to load. Probably another guy with no mic. Walter, you know, speak up. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, we're all micless except for me, but thanks anyway. It doesn't matter, and we can talk by the chat and actually get into real subjects if we want. That works with me. It just feels a little bit, you know, uneven, but not necessarily. Maybe you want to chat uh, in uh, text. So, okay, I'm going to take a two-minute break and be right back, and hopefully people will join. In the meanwhile, I'm going to leave this live rather than let it go to the playlist. What declined? Oh, I invited you, Walter. As soon as you came in, there's a button I can click that puts you up on the video doc, and it timed out and said, oh, you declined. I think it just really timed out because, or or maybe you hit the decline, but because I just, I didn't ask you first. I did that with all three of them. Well, okay, now it says you want to be a guest. So I'm going to try it again, but probably uh, if you didn't set up your video, well, you don't have to set up your video as far as the live chats can, for fire talk is concerned but you know you got to have that all plugged in and and working in your browser kind of uh well usually these days you don't have to do anything but it doesn't have to be turned on or something you have to have a camera i guess that's what i'm trying to say <laughs> all right i'm going to be back in two minutes i promise oh darling please believe me
or not. Okay, let's see if we lost people. That kind of move is not a professional. That's not a professional broadcast. We, we lose you guys. People still here. Dead air. Well, you can come online. That wouldn't be. But no, nobody that can. Oh, I see. We lost Walter. So let's see. What do you guys want to talk about for subjects? I usually come with an agenda, but today it was kind of like I said. I was my agenda was figuring out fire chat. <laughs> So I have been thinking of several things on my own. Usually what this is all about for me, this hobby is there's other people that are interested in things I happen to be thinking of. And so it works out for me just to indulge what I've been thinking of and be public enough and people can be attracted. So obviously we've been talking a lot about profiling. That's still of great interest to me. I saw a video by Forever Wolf Films about her tendency towards obsession and how you can uh, focus that. And I think that's really what I'm going through. So I think these topics that we're talking about, and I notice my everyday life generally, it's like, oh, look how relevant oh, that's going on. Infinity, it said you asked to be guest, so I invited you again, but I have a feeling it just because you click, tried clicking that button. I'm glad everybody's clicking buttons. Um, and I would like to get more people that are able to be on doc. So profiling is one issue. Um, another thing is the idea of Bernie versus other protest candidates. And is Bernie really even a protest candidate? Candidate, And I would say no. Um, he's the real deal. I think, I feel about Bernie now, and this might be naive, but I really feel that he's smarter than me politically. Like he can actually, my faith in his abilities is such that I think he actually um, knows more than me, whereas people like Howard Dean, uh, I liked Howard Dean, but I didn't feel he was the full real deal, that he was totally astute and whatnot. Oh, try again then. Or I, you don't have to try again. I can invite you without you trying here. Let's try this. There, you're invited. It says you have 30 seconds to join, by the way. It's a countdown, 26 seconds, 25 seconds. Hey, there's a guy there with a silhouette haircut. That's got to be you. Well, you're on dock, so that part works. Am I to assume that you... See, number of guest viewers right now, it says four. And there's three people in here. So what's that even mean? I don't know. And eight viewers total. So I have no idea. Uh, yeah, there's viewers. It says eight. But then when I click on that, the top line says number of guest viewers, four. Maybe that's I've invited four people, even though you declined. Maybe that's it. And then over here, invite guest says zero, even though it says it's supposed to be a number of people. Right now, I assume what people see in the broadcast is a silhouette of you, a gray, light gray, or gray silhouette on black of infinity with I assume no audio because your mic isn't working in your current setup that you're calling from so um, yeah there's Bernie versus other uh, things I think Bernie would get a way lot more done than Hillary because he has in the Senate there's Walter's back now I don't know if um, Right, it doesn't see your mic. So, um, yeah, nothing I can do about that. You know, usually you can right click and it'll be like a, uh, you know, Adobe settings, but maybe this is pure. Anyway, I can't see a way to set up where it gets my inputs or anything. Um, so, uh, maximize Facebook, Twitter. I have no idea how you're supposed to go in and, and set up if you had more than one mic, for example. I would assume during, uh, well, it's using the one that my operating system is set. Yeah, no, like Tiny Chat, where you can go in and right click. I don't see anything like that. So I assume it's supposed to be using your operating system. Oh, there we go. 
Oh yeah, I didn't have any of that, but I'm always approving that in so many different apps. It probably was already. Oh wait, no, I probably did tell it when I signed up the other day to, that it could use my mic. Well, I don't know that Google is better. There's problems with Google. I mean, one thing I like the permanent link, and um, you know, it's just a matter of figuring out how how it works. I think that the Google's Hangouts is more mature. Um, there's weird things about Google. Yeah, that there's more options. Well, this is still beta. They've been talking about how they're you know they're expanding that out. I think it. What's good about this is if they're just going to put out things that work, and then we might have to wait for other buttons. But um, the thing with Google is when you have Google Hangouts, like for business, you can have a permanent link that's like a conference room, and that's really useful if you have a regular meeting or, in our case, a regular Sunday thing. People just go to that link. That is kind of important to me, even though you can deal with not having it. Um, so there's that. And I, these guys are trying to make really high quality videos. Oh, that was another thing. So another thing you can't do here that I hope is just something you can't do yet is screen share. But there, there might be ways for me to make, see if I can't choose the video source though, I can't. I couldn't change it, even if I share my screen. Yeah, the options are definitely better. Well, you know, it might be, too, that it's true. I, I like this better, but it might be true that it's missing some things where we have to keep using the Google Hangout for a while. But I personally am inclined to look the other way at a few problems. <laughs> No, I don't, yeah. Okay, well, I see the series of things. Yeah, Lana, okay, you know, it doesn't seem to ask you, but it might have, and I don't remember. But in reality, I think it is using the browser's ability to stream video. And as a result, it's supposed to use your operating set settings, whatever your operating settings. Well, uh, are you in Windows? Because I would say, you know, right click on that speaker icon and you Mac. Uh, I forget how it would work in Mac. And it could be that, that this product doesn't work very uh, well in Mac. What did I read about Fire Talk at Mac? Fire talk, Mac. Fire talk has something in the app store. Is that just for? Is that just for phones? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Well, I was just looking around. I don't see anything special for the Mac uh, that's worth taking more dead air time for. So, No, not in the app. It's just using whatever you have set up. So, like, if you have more than one camera, I also don't know what it would do.
See, I'm in Linux, so it's not like it's using some Windows or special thing. I mean, it should work on everything if it works on Linux usually. So if it's using the operating system for the sound devices, that makes sense. But with the video devices, that doesn't even make sense. What if I have more than one camera? I would have to select between them, I would think. You see, I don't think this um, run my control center. <laughs> so it's the Bernie versus the protest candidates. I'm going to publish this thing to YouTube. This is going to be the most boring of all of them so far, but whatever. Um, God, what was the other issue? So there's profiling, the Bernie stuff. Um, well, there's Bill Clinton arguing with the Black Lives Matter, pro Black Lives Matter protester. That could really help Bernie. It's the kind of thing. They really are in the 90s, those guys. Because, you know, from I was against him at the time. I've come to say, well, he was pretty good considering where he was working from, you know. But, you know, uh, they, they were the DLC, Democratic Leadership Council type Democrat conservatives that we're trying to prove that we, they weren't all Governor Moonbeams and, you know, President Peanut Farmer and stuff, and uh, that they were serious people, meaning they were willing to screw traditionally vulnerable groups over and incrementalism. And they're from the 90s. I mean, I have to admit that that was the best we could expect in the 90s, probably. It doesn't mean it was good. It's not the best we could imagine. And Bernie was around in the 90s. But, you know, we weren't ready. And now we're over ready for those guys. So I, uh, an interesting thing is Gordon Gecko was on CNBC. I don't know if anybody noticed this. He's the character uh, that Michael Douglas played on the movie Wall Street. And they asked him who he thought would be the best for the economy of the current candidates. And he said Bernie. And then he explained why, too. He says, because poor people, if you give them the money, uh, stimulus-wise, they spend it 100, 110% even. Uh, rich people spend about 5% of their income once you get enough money that you don't need it. So uh as far as buying brand new boats and things like this it slows down in a way that doesn't happen with the working class so if you break up uh that wealth and get some of it shook back into the poor people's hands they'll spend it and it goes straight back to the businesses okay infinity here we go dun, 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 dun. trying to dock infinity one more time here he comes. He's got, he's a, there you are. I don't hear anything. Fucking thing. Yeah, well, if it's just not going to work, then we won't use it. I have to admit that. I'm, I'm really curious. Is this a machine that you don't normally, what about other Sundays? Is this the same machine you've had no trouble in Google with? Huh. 
Huh. Yeah, well, that sucks then. I wonder what it's doing. Uh, I can only imagine. Yeah. Well, they might be too much in, in, uh, they might be too much in beta. Because there's not very many settings at all. I don't think at this point I could have missed it. There's some s things in there, fact, that we're about troubleshooting. Um, <laughs> contract. Da, 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 da. Guest troubleshooting. If a viewer cannot join a broadcast here, make sure you and the viewer are using a desktop device and are running Chrome. Are you running Chrome? Infinity, are you running Chrome? Okay. Uh -huh. Let's see. Um, permissions problem now. That didn't help. sucks. Well, if you wouldn't mind trying, I'd love you to restart Chrome and with your new audio settings because I would like to know how to get this to work because if it's one of these things where I can tell people, here's what you do, then fine. Otherwise, it might be too early, which is really unfortunate because I want the permanent link approach. Um... All right, thanks, Infinity. Come right back then. See how it works.
Oh, that's right. Fire. I keep calling it fire chat. It's fire talk. Hmm. A lot of silence. Sorry, you guys. Um, but I'm just trying to see if there's... Fire talk. There's no audio. Well, I guess I give up on that. Did Infinity go and come back? I was reading this other shit. I didn't see if you left and came back, Infinity. So I just re-invited you. Okay. Can you hear me? No? Fuck yeah. Finally, I can hear you. You can hear me. I can hear you. It's Great. working. So what was the magic? Let's have the debrief. What's well, the post-mortem? What did you have to do? Well, I just had to go into my settings and reset and tell my computer what to do, basically. And um, when I did that initially, it didn't work. <coughs> I had to restart Chrome to get that to work. Right. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. That's something people could do. Okay. So good. Yeah. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. Um, so I I wanted to uh, talk to you about a movie I saw last night. Oh, cool. What was it? Uh, you might have seen it. Uh, Hopefully. It'll, it'll probably big, be more interesting if I did. Uh, the big uh, – it's about the, the, the financial collapse. Uh, oh, I've big, heard about this one. The big no. swap. I, now I'm forgetting the name of it. Big uh, yeah, I don't think I have seen it, but I might even have seen it. It's it's on the top of my. Well, table. you, I know you have gotten to see it if you haven't seen it. Um, hold on, I'll tell you the name of it. Um, oh, wait. The big short. Yeah, the big short. Yeah, that was it. Uh, so. Oh, it's it was, done as a, a fiction style. I mean, it's done as a story, not a documentary. It's not. It's well, it's kind of both, really. It's sort of like it's it's an unusual movie. Um, it's done in a way where they sometimes break the fourth wall and they talk to the audience. And then sometimes they they use like celebrities and stuff to explain what's going on. Um, we know these complicated sort of financial schemes and everything and they they use like selena gomez for example to explain how these um complex derivatives work and um uh -huh. the i think they're called the cdos and how they're passed along and people betting on bets and you know that's yeah of, yeah and so it just and that that was actually a revealing point in the movie where one of the guys that was that had foreseeing all of this just you know kind of realized the whole economy of the, the world was just going to collapse because of all this crap um it, it was very i you know i feel like i'm kind of somewhat knowledgeable on on the subject but it, i learned a few things by watching it so um it was it, it was a good movie i would recommend it cool yeah i'll check it out definitely steve Carella. I remember it. I remember it coming by. Yeah, it, like you, I think everybody you, should watch that movie. I mean, just so. Were you, were you aware of of how the uh, mathematics of the mortgage speculation had worked? More or less. I mean, 
I, I couldn't pick apart a derivative mathematically, probably the way that they, you know, actually set it up. But uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of understood what, what was going on, uh, but it was more, it wasn't really the explanations that were helpful to me. It was more the, uh, the sort of chronological, the chronology of, of events, you know, the way everything sort of played out. And I, I really had no idea there were that many people that actually saw this coming. Oh yeah. You know, that that actually looked at it and saw it coming. And and what was so funny, and I, I can talk about this because you, you already know about all this stuff and it's not like spoilers for the movie. Yeah. Um but what what was so funny is they did what these guys that that saw this happening and were betting on it happening, basically. Um they didn't anticipate the corruption. So they started losing a lot of this. It looked like, you know, they were going to lose a lot of money for, for a moment there. Um, because by the time things started to happen, instead of owning up to it, they tried to cover it up basically. Yeah. And so then they, you know, they, they had, that's when all the fake, um, that that's when all the oh yeah this is this is triple a when it's really <laughs> just this horrible piece of crap you know mm-hmm. and they were getting these ratings with that were, did oh, they go into a, the double a did they go into the fact that there was this whole element of this whole story was that there were academic mathematicians that were saying why it would all work out what why it worked uh no they did not do that yeah no. Yeah, and if you think about it, there's an almost common sense principle where if you had the, you know, computer crunching kind of backup to do the math. Well, yeah, if you take a bunch of bad loans, they're not all going to be bad. So if you can take the best half, like do a statistical trick where, hey, we have a bunch of loans. This investment is the best half of them, including the fact that some might move back and forth and be in part of the fund. You know, there's ways to say if you get the best half. If so if you have a bunch of trash, but you know, hey, but we can identify the best half and then the best half and the best half. So we get the the you know the fifty percent of the loans that are good, and somehow they're investing in those. But the trick is, you don't know which ones are good until they go bad. So how do you actually put that? And they had this mathematical theory of how to do that kind of thing. That was basically a bullshit because you could call it corruption, but because it's not like people, when you apply math to the real world, there's approximations and people sort of did all the approximations in the way that made them a lot of money as opposed to stability. So, but yeah, no, there was a really big, and I don't know the math either. I'm not super expert or anything, but I know there was a big academic component of kind of PhD saying, hey, we have this idea. And uh, there's a grain of good idea to it in the sense that if you're going to have, if you want to loan money to working class people and some of them are going to lose their job, not be able to pay you back, you want to have the math to kind of handle that, you know, and everybody else's rates accommodate or whatever. But, but they did, did, they, did they also include all the the swaps in that math? I mean, that was the main thing. Yeah, the problem. No, no. And they lied about who they were getting it from and they, the quality of the loans tanked right so the math is done with a certain quality of loans but given this opportunity to make money off of bad loans they just started giving out even worse loans that weren't 50 percent going to go through 100 percent were going to fail and and all kinds of fraud and the part i don't understand but i know it's a big part of it is like they couldn't even in the end their stories where they were foreclosing on people that they didn't even own the mortgage of. Like they just heard about the mortgage. You know, the data was so confused, which yeah. also implies that corruption was a big thing. I mean, there's people mislabeling, not taking care of data because the data makes them look guilty is usually what that means, right? Because if the data doesn't make you look guilty, you don't want to lose track of fucking mortgages. That's your money. But if the data is going to make you look guilty and you're really making your money off of selling the mortgages, not that they're any good or keeping track of them, if you're flipping them right away, I mean, that's the other problem is kind of like, you know, flipping real estate is an evil thing. And these guys were kind of flipping it on the money side without even looking at the real estate they're flipping 
or the people whose loans they're buying and selling. But um, that was all- part of what the predatory aspect of it was, was they were saying, well, look, you know, the prices just keep going up and up and up and you don't have to worry about it. You know, yeah. uh, when you when we get to that end of the, you know, when we start that balloon payment, you can just refinance and, you know, everything's going to be higher valued at that point. Yeah. And so that's how they trick people into doing it. Well, and there was the same thing when I was a kid and in the 80s, but it wasn't as severe and they didn't have this derivative market that would destroy all of banking. You know, but there were people, a lot of people getting uh, these balloon payments had been invented. And of course, you're going to go for it. Am I going to, you know, I'm paying rent right now. None of that goes to my equity. I might as well buy this house, get to do whatever I want with it. And in five years, I'm going to have to come up with $15,000. Well, okay, I guess I have five years to worry about it. Why wouldn't a working class person take a deal like that? Yeah. Especially since you kind of assume the bank is not going to give you more money than you can pay back, that they've done the math. Yeah. Yeah. But they actually do the math in this slave way where like, we want you to be slightly more in debt than you can afford. It's like, how does that work out in their benefit? But that's that's kind of how it works. Well, but yeah, no, it sounds interesting. It's funny and, uh, how people just blame the poor people that aren't experts in finance, you know. <laughs> but yeah, they're the ones to blame for for the whole entire financial crisis. Yeah. Right. So it, yeah, it was definitely worth watching. I would rec- I think anybody, everybody should watch that that movie. Um, it was very, well, you and I were talking about the Henry George thing, and I mean, I, I again, this is kind of like where okay, I'm obsessed by it, maybe, so I see it everywhere. But to me, it's just more and more obvious the more I think about it. Now that I've you know learned this is like we're talking about the value of property and the value of property going up and why does it keep going up? Or for example, I'm, I just put up my, uh, um, I just, we just had a written offer accepted on a house. We're trying to buy a house. We wanted to buy the one we're in now, but it's too expensive here. Now we got in here two years ago, the people that bought it, when they bought it, there was like water in the base, standing water. So they fixed it up a lot and, and it raised in value but since we've been here they want they were a family they were going to live here fixing up for themselves they had to leave they rented it we rented it so basically in the last two years they've just they you know there's it's a nice house and yet they put a little bit of lipstick on the pig so it also has some problems they had to fix the roof uh, all of a sudden uh, this winter and stuff like this so you know the deck is some of the boards are running through and so they got fixed and they're not even, it's not painted. It's kind of patchwork. And yet the value of the house has gone up because the value around here is going up and we're near a national park and Martha Stewart lives around here. There's a lot of mansions and stuff. And um, so what is that all about? Why, if you leave a house and you basically abandon it you're not fixing it up i mean you only do things that have to be you know the roof was actually leaking they had to fix it they are landlords they fix the pipes when the pipes are breaking which has happened a lot because the water went acidic or something now my end point is just we can't buy this house because in that two years it went from the amount we could get a loan and thought we could afford to more than that while they were letting the house deteriorate, the house is declining through attrition. Its actual usefulness is declining, but its value went up. As its use was declining, its value went up, and they get the difference, and they want the difference. I've given them $40,000 in the last couple of years to live here for in rent, but they want the difference because even though they didn't do shit, other people are... De- buying land and raising the value of this land because other people are interested in this area and so because they hold a piece of paper and haven't maintained the land and they're not even bad landlords or anything i'm just saying this is how it works boom they're supposed to get that difference of fifty thousand dollars thus i can't buy the house on the other hand well the the thing i'm not really clear on is it seems yeah i understand that you're saying you get taxed on you know, the improvement or whatever, but there's still going to be an evaluation. So there's still going to, it might mitigate that problem a little bit, but there's still going to be an increase, right? 
Yeah, there there could definitely be an increase. Um, that it doesn't change that fact. Though. I mean, the, the what the goal of the end result of his system is how much rent you would pay for an empty piece of property, right? Because like farmers will go to an empty piece of property and rent it. Whatever that rent value is, the government wants that rent. And if they did that, then there would be no need for other taxes. That, that's it in a nutshell. So not the rent for renting a space in a building on the property, not the rent for any improvements, not the rent to use any improvements, which is basically the interest on capital. But, um, well, so, I'm just saying, like, so if, if you don't like his idea, to what you're trying to do, the property are still going to go up. Yes, right. they are going to go up. It's that's not the solution. The, the, the issue with the idea, whether it's good or, or bad, is, is that when let's say the government comes and in you know, like here in this island, they keep doing studies about internet and wireless, and that's how we they got internet on here. They pay for a twenty thousand dollar study to figure out what would would take to bring wireless here, and then slowly the people come in and bid, and it gets done right. That that's the government kind of seeding, uh, you know what goes on. And as this place gets internet, what's going to happen? Well, the value of land is going to go up. When they build a road, the value of land is going to go up. So if they can recover the improved value of land, then here's the thing. When they do an improvement and nobody buys it, nobody moves to that area, if they did an a built a school but there's no kids to go in and it doesn't raise the value of the area, that would be a bad governmental investment. I don't know of any examples of that ever happening. But when they improve the infrastructure and the value of land goes up, then if they get the benefit of the higher rents, then that's fine. Now you'd say, yeah, but our rents, we could still be priced out of a neighborhood. Nobody ever said this was guarantee that you can't be priced out of a neighborhood. What this is, is that instead of people that aren't doing anything to a guy that owns a piece of property that's going up and up and up, but he's not taking care of this property, but it's going up because of everything everybody else is doing. He, his value is going up partially because of what the government is doing in that area. Right. And in, in keeping up with the growth of the infrastructure, when there's enough people there, it becomes a police station, a station. And this raises safety and raises values. The guy that currently is considered to own that piece of property, he's not done anything to raise that value. So the issue with Henry George is he's saying, look, who should get the rent is the government because they're actually involved in why the price went up. Now, if the price went up because people are moving there the government is still indirectly involved in that, right? If it's bad right. government, people aren't going to want to move there. I think they're, under that scenario where, where you have people that are going to sell their home, you would almost always have an improvement because some financial interest is going to come in there. As long as it's in a area, in an area where the rest, you know, all the other places have been upkept and, and improved or whatever. And uh, as long as that's the case, you're you're always going to have the financial interest to say, "Hey, we'll we'll fix up the place." You know, we're going to take a percentage of of the sale. But but what do you mean? I mean, we currently have a system right now. I'm not I mean, saying I that as a criticism. I'm just saying that that's probably what would happen, right? Yeah, I'm just not sure what you mean. Well, that's you're creating an incentive, right? For to always improve the the land that you're sitting on. Well, no. Why I don't? Why do you say that? Well, that way you can get more money for it when you sell it, right? Well, yes and no. I mean, if you build a mansion in a place where people that buy mansions don't want to live, then that would be a useless improvement. Well, yeah, but I'm not saying that every single thing that you do is. I'm just saying that in in that sort of situation where you have, yeah. you know. Well, the claim of the theory is more like this. It's that people would only do improvements that they personally wanted to use, right? That it would end land speculation. You wouldn't be 
doing improvements for other people to use so much as you pay the government directly for your land lease and the people that that find it most beneficial now real estate agents won't be the main people playing in real estate people that want to use the real estate for a business or to live on those are the people that will be um, involved and it'll be a lot more easy for them to be involved because let's say that you want to build a coffee kiosk and there's an empty piece of land in town instead of having to come up with seventy thousand dollars that the speculator holding it wants and is willing to wait years because it's probably held in some fund or trust fund or investment fund and they can afford to wait which is just historical that's just how it works instead of that you don't have to come up with a hundred thousand dollars or whatever to get this lot to put your little kiosk on that you've already built and you want to tow out there you just have to go to the government and pay like the equivalent of a first and last month's rent. And at that point, you're the leaseholder. You have all the rights of private property that people normally have because the government has said, okay, we recognize you're paying the taxes on this land. This is your land to use just like private property. Boom. You don't need to buy that land or get a loan to buy the land. You can just, if you have the first and last month's, and can keep paying it, then you can get the land from the government. So it'll make it easier to go use the land and the speculators that hold on to land empty lots in little towns for years waiting for them to become more valuable, that would be pointless because they would be paying more taxes on that. And wow. if it's not of use to them, they, they're, there's not a reason to do it. Meanwhile, the taxes that Apple would be paying on the Apple Store property, they'd still pay it because they make millions of dollars in the New York Apple Store. It's going to be nothing to them because, again, we're not talking about the kind of rent. Well, it's nothing to them because on. it's nothing to them because now the, the the everything is equal and everyone has to pay taxes, and so they're just going to pass it on to the consumer. Well, of course, they're going to pass it on to the consumer, but that's fine because if the consumer won't okay. pay, but it, no, but if the but if the consumer won't pay, all they have to do is move their store to somewhere less valuable. If it's a manufacturing plant, they they're not going to move their store. Well, if you what do you mean? A, you mean a retail store? Well, I was talking about the Apple Store in New York, for example. Yeah, I mean, it's theirs because they if, get a lot if, of people to go in there. <laughs> if they want to pay New York prices, which they already do. Right, right? but that, that just means the New Yorkers, the people. Wait, wait, do you not think that the current the current rent of that store is passed on as well, right? Uh, yeah, sure, it's part of the. But not necessarily to the people in New York, right? Those people in New York might be getting a subsidy for all we know. All of the phones they sell there, how expensive it is to have that big glass store, could be the iPhone buyers in the rest of the world are subsidizing having that store there. But most stores in New York would raise the price of the product compared to other stores. Apple having standardized pricing doesn't do that as far as we know they're subsidizing customers in that particular branch right perhaps yeah so the point is that two things one you have to remember they'd only be renting the land and that rent would be cheaper than today most likely and their improvements would belong to themselves and they would not be paying rent on those kinds of improvements. So if, if anything, it would likely lower their rent because right now, if you want to have a Times Square store or a store in an expensive New York location that's a sought after, uh, my understanding is they're already land leases. The private owners do not sell land to McDonald's in Times Square. McDonald's has to pay for a lease. They spend money to build their own building on there. And if they were stopped paying the land lease, that building belongs to the landowners and they can rent it to somebody else because they know that, you know, there's no reason to sell land that's that valuable in Times Square. Instead, well, the, the whoever, point... if, if Jamba Juice gets big, they'll lease it from you and pay more, right? So you keep the lucrative raising of rents in play. I think you kind of miss the point. Of what I was saying about okay, probably they're did. just they're just going to pass it on to the consumer. I mean, you uh, I didn't flesh it out, so you were right to go and point out the things you were saying. But um, 
it, the difference is, is that the reason why you have the corporate stru tax structure in the United States that, that we currently have is because you can manipulate the corporations to do certain things with the tax code. Whereas I don't really see how you're going to do that in, in this circumstance. Well, that's right. This is a very libertarian sim system, and I, that's what I like. I consider myself a progressive libertarian, and it is very much libertarian. I mean, basically, in a country, if you had 20 countries all run this way, they would not all do the same thing. It would depend on the population, right? Are these kind of guys that go and start mines? Maybe they'd overmine themselves, and they didn't have enough uh, you know, environmental protection, and it could be a bad thing. And, and yet the, I like it because it's like I think every society would end up having a, a lot of development uh, based on whoever it was, you know, whoever was really in that country. And maybe the working class in that country, is, you know, they haven't been allowed to develop. Well, maybe, you maybe we, them develop. You might have a lot of tin buildings and who knows what they do. But maybe we'll let them do it. It's democracy. Go ahead. Right. Well, maybe we should get to the fundamentals a bit here, but I'm, I'm just going to take a quick break okay sounds good and be right back okay okay i'm gonna do that too so i mean what five minutes i mean you don't i'm not asking you to commit to it but just give me an idea i'm gonna take a break too less than five probably yeah okay yeah i'll be gone about two minutes and i'll be back okay okay bye walter i'm going to um so, Walter, if you're there in the chat, say something, and I will see if you can broadcast. Did you ask because you think I love SimCity from the first version I've always played? Now I play this grip better one that is called uh, City Skylines by this Finnish company. It's it's the roads don't have to be straight and stuff. It's you, it's awesome. If you like SimCity, you got to play. Okay, so here we go. Well, now here's the thing: you can only have one person on dock. So this is another problem to this, but. Um, so let's see if I do this. So what, what happens is if we want to do this, we'll have to ask for, I would like, if I could go off doc and put both of you on, I'm not sure that might be possible, but I don't see a way. So let's just see, I'm going to go, Hey, Walter, it's working. I hear your audio as well. We're on. So, um, now I feel bad because I was going to take a two-minute break, too. <laughs> no, you can take wanna, a two-minute break. Do you, want, do you want a soliloquy for a while? You have my channel. It's going to go up on my channel here. You could say, and here's why. Hey, no, Piro I can channel participate in the discussion. It was really awesome. The, the Piro, you can, make, you can officially declare this uh, channel uh, supporting Trump or something. You can do any kind of mischief. Okay, I'll be back in two minutes. And this is our and final. This is our first time actually meeting. I've been a hero, or you've been a hero of uh, mine for um, quite some time. Oh, that's awfully <laughs> nice to say. Really well. I mean, um, maybe I shouldn't leave. No, I'm going to go for a couple of minutes. But that's, that's uh, uh, thanks for saying that. But I'm I'm interested to know what your uh, you know which which what your cross section of my stuff you've seen or why you would say that but okay i'll see you in like uh 65 seconds awesome Two weeks with five, 52 times five, 250, $2,500 a year. No, 
$250 a year. So a thousand years, you get 250, thousand. So 500 years. Dun, 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 dun. All right, I'm back. Hey, uh, Infinity, I tested another person on Doc while you're gone, so tell me when you're back. I can come, come back, though. So, hey, Walter. So, uh, cool. Well, how long have you been familiar with my channel? You must be at YouTube then, or do you mean? Um, yeah, going back. Um, when the... Oops, my thing's all fucked up. I would say years. Um, definitely, um, definitely before you moved to Maine. Um, um, before, um, before your daughter um, passed away. Lost your daughter. Uh, that's pretty long, um, man. <laughs> um, I, I'm definitely um, somebody who kind of sits back and listens a lot and. I don't participate unless I really have to think I have something to contribute, <laughs> which isn't. Yeah, that's a but, that's a that's a good that's a good personality trait. I don't have that. <laughs> I, I, um, I participate well, regardless. It, it, if too many people are like me, nothing. You know, it's a very silent, that's right. not too terribly interesting chat room. That's good. So you appreciate the loud mouse a little bit. So that's good. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So, um, okay, I don't know how, how private information wise, but where are you there in the country? Look like you're in the Seattle, US. Massachusetts. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I really uh, like the East Coast. Uh, have you seen me talk about it all? Um, you know, I was raised in California and really had a weird idea, they, a lie. There's a lot of lies uh, that the Californians think they're enlightened and tell. But, you know, I thought all of the East Coast was. Jersey City. I mean, I even thought New York was more urban than it is. You know, it's full of trees. It's really quite of a green city. And when you drive through the freeways, there's vines coming down. It's all, you know, what is, I was taught it was all concrete. In reality, I'm over here. My mom's in Virginia. So I've driven many times now from Maine all the way down to Virginia. And it's just beautiful. The forest the whole way. That doesn't happen in California. In California, you drive six hours, you're in this terrible desert on Highway 5. So... It's really gorgeous yeah. over here, yeah. But. Yeah, if you're, uh, I, <laughs> having been out west and such, no, I like it green, um, and varied, uh, um, you know, varied landscape. Um, Maine is really special, <laughs> as far as um, this. I don't know if there's too many pl places. Cat wants to join. I uh, always amazed at how pristine things are up in Maine. I have been. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, a lot of things I look for, and um, and again, some of the things are in the whole East Coast, just like granite in California. You go, I'm from the Sierra Mountains, and it's like granite, and it seems so special. And it's true, we have some granite mountains of a size that you don't necessarily see, but granite, or in general fucking everywhere all the way down to new york at least it's uh, it's exposed everywhere because of the giant glacier so yeah so i like a lot of things but it, it does seem kind of pristine in this house that i just bought you know so much less expensive than i could get anywhere else and um well i haven't just bought it i shouldn't say that knock on wood but i mean they accepted the offer supposedly we have a loan set up so we'll see but um yeah, no, I really like Maine and, and the East Coast as well. And uh, I'm going to move a little bit further south, but Maine, it's its also compared to California, it's weird because you can live in Maine and you're closer to Boston than I would be to San Francisco if I went and lived where my family's from in California. In other words, right, it's too right. big of a state. My concept of a state is so huge, it would be from Maine all the way to New York would be, you know, the East Coast version of California, like. It's no big deal. You going to another state to me as a Californian is a thing. Like it's a long way away, and you went to another state. And here it's like, no, I went to buy a car in another state, and it was an hour away. You know that doesn't. So, um, which I all like, and also just how it's so spread out. Most of the East Coast, especially the the Northeast, seems like it's relatively small towns. But instead of being forty miles apart, they're seven or eight miles apart or ten, mm -hmm. and, and so there's a lot of people. 
but it's like the forest. It's actually a lot of rural living over here. Even though there's so many people, everybody's got the iPhones, good network, good internet, because they're all close together. And really, it looks like the forest. And so, uh, yeah, I'm, I, uh, it's also funny, too. Here's the thing. Since you, you Did you grow up over here then? I grew up in New York. Okay, well, close enough. I mean, yeah, because what I was going to talk about is how when you're on the freeways, when you hit a road, it's like there's a different kind of driver. And and I uh -huh. and I'm not from around here, so I, I just got into Connecticut. But after like the third trip, it's like, did I just get into Connecticut or something? Because they are always, and so uh, it's just kind of funny how there's so much different culture packed into those little spaces I'm talking about. They're really the distinct cultures, including how they drive, obviously who they vote for, everything. I've lived between Massachusetts, um, a whole bunch of years in New Hampshire and a whole bunch of years in Massachusetts. And, and when I moved up, and I moved up here in 86, um, it was really, um, you know, lower population back then. New Hampshire was um, just in this massive expansion and development phase. Um, and you had a sense there that, you know, be nice to people on the road because they're probably your neighbors and you'll see them. <laughs> and it's a long winter. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, Connecticut, I think, is, is, and it's kind of a lot of people that are very connected to the cities and the big right. money jobs, but have gone to the country in Connecticut. And so you see an urban almost attitude, even though it's so beautiful and so country everywhere, the way the roads are built and everything. Or when I go to Virginia now, I drive over to Pennsylvania because we escape all, it's like an hour longer, supposedly, according to Google Maps, really, it's not because of the traffic. And it's just gorgeous over there and pretty much empty country roads, 60 mile an hour country roads the whole way and not as much problem with driving. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting learning about it. I mean, I only have two. If I talk much about it, it'll be one of these things like I'm, I am talking when I don't know. It's my two years, very noobish experience of like what it's like to drive through New Jersey. I mean, I don't really have it, but it's, it's definitely interesting. But um, and driving to New Jersey is what I grew up on, pretty much. Yeah. Um, well, I went on the New Jersey Turnpike one time, and it was like to pay for a road. Toll roads is new to me, first of all. So many toll roads, and um, but to pay like fifteen bucks or whatever it is, and then I got a ticket, and I and I I did stop and pay, but I got a ticket for not paying somehow. And I don't know what the hell happened, you know, but between the accidentally going through an easy pass or something. But, um, yeah, actually, that shit seemed really I'm wrong to me. Sorry. sorry, go ahead. Massachusetts, they'll just track you down. <laughs> yeah. Well, they can just send you they can just send you notices now. I mean, they do all everywhere has the your license plate camera. But yeah. um what do you think? Yeah, t t toll roads is kind of weird to me. I mean, uh, has that been here forever? When did that start up? Um, you know, it comes and goes. Um, like New Hampshire, I mean, excuse me, Connecticut, when I was growing up, had a whole bunch of toll roads. They took them out. Um, supposedly, after they pay off the road, they're supposed to take them away, like on Mass Pike, and that's never going to happen. Right, right. Um, because it costs like 50 bucks. If I go through New York, if I go where Google tells me, it could cost like 50 bucks to get from my mom in Virginia up to my house. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and they've actually added highways in New Jersey. that used to be just the Garden State and the um, Turnpike. And... Um, I would say, yeah, New Jersey, New York are the most tollish places I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, I, 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 then, the, uh, although then, the, then there's um, New Hampshire has an interesting scam going. Depending on, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you hit the two dollar toll um, once you cross into New Hampshire, come, going to Massachusetts. Yeah, what do you find interesting about that one? Though? Why is that any different? All the games they've played with it over the years, and. Uh, 
and that there's in any one interest and then there's an actual population who have to avoid the highways because you know they can't afford that toll every day you know well the I reason it's new jersey know. and new york is because i think bridges are where you find tolls everywhere and that, that makes some sense and again yeah. supposed to end when the bridge is done but you know whatever and uh so they're the ones that expanded so here we have a situation where this thing can't have multiple people docking which i didn't necessarily know i wasn't too worried about so what we have to do is we have to bring people on and off docks so i guess uh if i don't know we might so end we up going have to say, two at a time limited number of people yeah. Oh, no. Two at a time. Yeah. So, but, you know, it could work. I mean, we just have to figure out who actually has something to say next instead of us interrupting. I mean, it might help with the it's too much, too loud when we're all screaming here. It's crap, says Steiser. Okay. Hey, Walter, can I bring up Steiser here? He wants to. Sure, go right ahead. A second. All right. Nice talking to you. I'm glad to talk to you. Absolutely. Okay. Let's bring Steiser up and then we can. Just because that'll be fun and we can worry about infinity later when we maybe going to talk about say, hey. Oh, he's not here yet. It says waiting for user to join. It's badass looking cigarette smoking. Uh, I can't tell. It looks like looks like a black fellow from uh, Liverpool. I don't know. Dude, if this is works, <laughs> this is completely shit. I'm actually talking. I'm talking and no one can fucking hear me. Talking, no one. I can hear you. I can oh, hear you. Oh, you can hear me? Oh, yeah, we can oh, hear okay. you the whole time. Yeah, it, we're just it's shit, you okay? Like, no offense, firetalk.com, it's crap. Fix, fix your shit. What's crap. crap about it? It's because you can only have two people talking at the same time. I, I want a pub discussion, man. I like oh. all the arguments of shit. Oh, you do? You like the Yeah, overtime. it sounds nice. You like the cross sounds, Okay. Yeah, it sounds like being in the pub. You know, when there's like 10 people all going... I get a lot of complaints about it. I get a lot of complaints about it. Oh, they just don't go to the pub. They don't socialize. A, p a lot of people complain. It's like, oh, we can't hear everybody. You got to control it more. And that people yeah, but like, they, yeah, but they, they never go out. They don't, don't actually go out in real life. They just sit behind the computer and think that people don't have conversations in like, places like yeah. pubs. Yeah, I wish that it. Yeah, this is maybe a fatal problem because I do like people. I want to have some controlled conversations. I mean, where we control ourselves, but people should be able to interject on their own and not have to. I mean, raising your hand might be a little slow for the kind of conversations. That's, that's, that's also awesome shit. You should just be a grown up and just shut up. If someone else it, is speaking, shut up. It's it's quite that simple. I don't think you're supposed to like uh, put your hand up and shit.